everybody, Jeff Stone here with day 98 of the year 2015 at magicreview.com. We're looking at the Matrix pad today. Uh, this is going to be one of the ones that I guarantee people are going to say to me, why didn't you perform it on the video for us? And I did, frankly, I just don't have that kind of time, guys. I just don't. Um, I literally spend about 40 hours a week on review stuff. And I don't get paid a penny for doing any of this. So 40 hours a week plus, I still have to do something to provide money and food for my family. Plus I do have, you know, five kids and uh, that's a lot of stuff. And I sort of need some free time here and there too. So in order to perform this, uh, I'd have to get somebody to hold a camera for me and hold, because it's just, you can't perform it at this angle. And uh, I'd have to just, it, it's just too much of a pain to perform it and cut it and edit it and, and have somebody, you know, I have practiced it enough. That's the big thing till I feel comfortable doing it. And then I just don't have anybody that's available to hold the camera for me. Really. Um, my kids, I've had them do it before and it just doesn't work out. So anyway, I'm not going to perform it. Sorry. Uh, but you can go look at the ad trailer and the ad trailer is, it's very accurate. There's, they, they had to edit, um, to protect the method, but I, to be honest, in the DVD, they show an uncut version of it from start to finish. It's actually the same footage that you see in the ad trailer without the cuts. And I felt that they could have shown that and it would have been totally fine. I don't think it really exposed anything. There was one moment where it doesn't expose anything, but you'd go, oh, I think I know what he did there. And so I think they're just trying to protect the method. I didn't feel like they were being sneaky or dishonest. <clears throat> so that aside, um, this product is, um, I got mixed uh, issues with it. Uh, the, the idea that you can draw a dot in each corner and they move as visually as they move is actually all true. That's all accurate and all correct. And then at the end, you can tear it off and hand it out. It relies on one move at the end, um, and which again is not anything that uh, is... Um, fishy or anything like that. It's a move that totally works and, and allows you to do that. And then um, the uh, it relies on the gimmicks that are supplied. Now the problem with the gimmicks, um, it's hard to tell you what the problem is without telling you what the gimmick is and I can't do that. So I'll just say that the gimmicks, um, they had a tendency to fall off of the, the they'd fall out, fall off. Um, and when you're they're, they're most likely to fall off when you do that last move that allows you to tear the pad off. And by the way, in the presentation, when you see him holding the pad up and then he moves, apparently moves the last dot to the four, then moves his hand right there. You're clean and you can tear that thing right off. You don't have to do any funny business. The funny business has already happened and it's, it's pretty, I mean, it's indetectable, you know, as long as you do it the right way. So so, but when you do that thing right before that moment, um, before you drag the dot down, uh, there's a relatively decent chance that part of the gimmick's going to come dislodged is the only way I could think of to say that safely. <clears throat> In that particular case, if that happens, it's not the end of the world because the trick's already over and everything's already happened and there's nothing to see. And so even if the gimmick does come dislodged, it doesn't matter because you're done using the gimmick at that point. But if it does come dislodged, you might lose it, which I did. I lost. And luckily, there's a bunch of extra little things in there. And the thing that you need is probably is pretty easy to make. But I lost one of them. I couldn't find it. I had another one fall off, but I, I found that one. Um, now, the other thing, though, is doing it when you're doing that, when you're making the dots move. Um, if the gimmicks dislodge, then you've got a problem because then the method and the technique is all exposed. Now it's the kind of thing that if the gimmicks were a little bit stronger, uh, if you know what I'm saying, then this wouldn't be a problem, but they're not. And I don't know how you could make them any stronger. So, um, you have to just be super, super careful when handling the little notepad that you get uh, and how to and, and, and doing the performance. 
So it's the kind of thing that I, I imagine you could probably overcome that with um, practice, but it's more about practice, about how delicate you handle things, how delicately you handle things. Uh, but it is it is kind of, um, it's a little bit fidgety. It's a little bit, I still think it's doable. It's going to take some effort on your part, but it, it's, it's, it's fidgety. Now, the other thing is, um, they talk about in the ad trailer how you can keep the notepad, the little sticky notes in your pocket and just go anytime. That's true, but the gimmicks will want to come dislodge in that scenario. So he shows a way how to do that so they don't dislodge and you can keep it in your pocket. And it's actually a pretty good idea, but it requires an extra step in the presentation, which is you hold the pad and you draw uh, a dot and then you make a mistake and then you tear that sheet off and throw it away and you start over. That allows you to to safely ring in the gimmicks without them falling apart and falling dislodging in, in your pocket. So if you don't mind that little extra step in the presentation, then yeah, there's no problem putting this in your pocket and carrying it around with you wherever you go <clears throat> and, and being able to do it without losing the gimmicks. But if you lose one during performance, um, then while you're making the, the dots move, then there's a problem. The, the effect is ruined. Um, if you lose it, one of the gimmicks while you're doing the last four, the fourth dot, then you're fine, but you won't be able to repeat it until you make another gimmick or whatever. So that's the skinny on it, guys. Um, if you like the effect that you saw in the trailer, it does look that good. It is very good and clean, um, but uh, it is, it's is—it's going to take some finesse and some working with the thing until, until where you feel like you're no longer fidgety with it and that you're confident that those I almost blurted out what they are, shoot, uh, that those things won't become dislodged. Um, it's going to take a while to, you know, you have to seriously work on that to make sure that you feel comfort comfortable with that. So if you don't mind all that, I think you'll be happy with this. It's 30 bucks. Um, I gave it three stars, Stone Stats Jam with the little G. Uh, I think it has potential, um, but it's going to take, um, and, and I don't have a problem with something that's going to take work and, and, and um, practice and all that. I have no problem with that. I mean, I'm not going to give, um, you know, Erdnays a bad review because the stuff in there is freaking difficult as heck or whatever. Um, that's not how I work around here, guys. Hopefully you know that by now. But when the reason you're having to be careful is because the gimmick is not 100% surefire and you have to be delicate around the gimmick and you have to work hard to properly get that proper delicate finesse that could have been fixed by making the gimmick a little bit better. That's where I have a little bit of an issue. That's why I gave it three stars. Stone says a gem with a small G. Time to like the video, subscribe to my channel, share it out to all of your social places, and listen to the random iTunes song of the moment, which is... Oh, shoot. Uh, that's the Taliban song by Toby Keith. Man, Mr. Controversial Country Music right there. I love Toby Keith, man, but um, we, we've got nothing better to do here in Utah than debate over whether or not we should let country uh, co Toby Keith say the A word in a concert. <laughs> yeah. When he was coming back, you know, after 9-11 and he published, he wrote that song called American Soldier, which is a beautiful song. I love that song. Not American Soldier. Sorry. Um, that is a beautiful song. But... Um, Oh, uh, the it's uh, the nickname's the Angry American Song. Um, ah, I can't remember what it's called. Shoot. Anyway, that song um, says we'll put a boot in your a word. And uh, he was going to be coming here to um, Utah to tour, and there was this huge debate on the radio and the talk shows local about whether or not he was going to say the a word in his concert. I was like, oh my gosh, we got better news to cover than that, folks. Anyway, um, so the Taliban song, I'll put a link to that. It's a funny song. I really dig it. So that's it for today. Tomorrow, day 99, I had somebody on my YouTube channel. I just happened to notice it today. Um, he said, uh, could you review Bandwidth tomorrow on April 9th? And uh, that was very specific. I don't know why he wants it tomorrow. But I was like, what the heck? I hadn't decided what I was going to review anyway. So we're doing it. Bandwidth by Gregory Wilson tomorrow. Day 99. 
99 days, folks. Almost day 100. Can't believe it. Anywho, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.